As the historian Thucydides famously said, the tactical pupper is fast, but the gold dot is faster. Hi friends, welcome to today's bonus badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa, and with me as always, Mike Williver. Today's video comes to us from Ventura, California. Palm pepper spray has recently reformulated for even more effect when you bless the deserving with the hot sauce. Palm is what I use between a harsh word and a gun and encourage everyone to do likewise. Our perp here has led multiple jurisdictions of officers through a chase. They have wanted him, they tried to pull him over because he's wanted in a felony shooting and he decided not to pull over. They finally got him with some stop sticks. We're gonna see what happens here when the officer finally gets him to bail out of the car. Stand by. Now driving in the center median. We're eastbound on Harbor. The first shot you heard in that was the perp shooting at the officer. The other shots were from the officer. He was better with the gun, and so the perp took the asphalt temperature challenge. Everyone, I get it. We work on mindset here. It's incredibly important. We're glad to bring you this content. If you want to get better with your skill set, come over to the Active Self Protection Extra YouTube channel where we post eight days a week to help you get better with that as well. Let's get to the lessons. So they finally get this guy to pull over, right? Because they've stop sticked him and all those things. You gotta know in this moment, things are going bad. Take that time if you can, deep breaths. Make sure you plan in advance. Okay, if I do get into shooting, grip sights and trigger those things. Because you see this guy finally kind of bailing out of the car. You can just see it at the top there that he's bailing out of the car. You know this is going to be a bad moment. You know bad stuff is coming here. Now, it's interesting to me, Mike, that this guy is calling his dog as well. We don't know that this guy's armed and if he's not armed but he runs, yeah, sometimes the tactical puppers is the way to go. Yeah, the fur missile is is really a phenomenal tool. We've talk, talked about this a lot lately on the channel. And yeah, the, he actually, I think that's Foose's heel, right? Is that yep. what it says? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's just keeping the dog with him. He's not sicking the dog on the guy just yet. But yeah, the canine is such a great, great force multiplier. Right up until the guy has a gun, right? right. So if we are talking about a, a fleeing felon, if we're talking about somebody who refuses to come into custody, we don't want to, to end up having to use more significant levels of force, great tool. Uh, but again, this guy's gonna end up having a gun and shooting at the officers. That makes the dog now a completely inappropriate tool because now you gotta use deadly force and a canine is not deadly force. So you gotta make that transition. And we're going to see that here, that the officer is able to make that transition quickly when he sees the guy take a shot at him. You can just barely see the muzzle flash there. And, and now hear me on this one. This is where confidence matters because the chance of this punk being able to hit you from what looks to me to be about 15 to 20 yards, something like that, while he's running away from you is slim. But your ability to hit at those distances reliably can give you the confidence to know that you can win this fight. Yeah, and bear, bear in mind, we want to stop his actions as quickly as we can because there's who knows what that where that round's going to end up. It might not hit you, but it's going to hit something or someone. And absolutely, uh, you need to have the advantage marksmanship-wise over, over these guys. And, and I think we for sure this officer did. And specifically in law enforcement context, I know we do a lot of training in the three to seven yard range or even the zero to three because of Leoka and those things that say, oh, most officers are killed at zero to three feet. I think those statistics are a little bit misleading. The gunfights that the officers win, they tend to win at much longer distances. So you've got to be good at those long distances so that they don't end up in those short distance gunfights like we see here. Now, let's talk about what this guy did here is you see the officer fire again. So, so the officer finally steps in and close enough and look at this guy has turned and is facing the officer with a gun in his hand. When we talk about your first shot is often your best shot. This is why, is that again, every shot from here is a more difficult shot for the officer to make. And it's, I think, human nature that we're a little bit sloppy and hopeful on the first shot and then we settle down from there and get those others really trained to that point of unconscious competence that you can bring all the skill that you possess on demand here and get the hit the first time. Yeah, and if you, again, I'll harp on this again, officers and deputies agents who, if you're not up to snuff with your skills, you know it already, no one needs to tell you, 
get to the range and practice the stuff you suck at. It's unpleasant, it's not fun, but here's the good news. Once you get better at it, it will cease to suck and you will cease to suck. And, and if you're having a hard time figuring out how to not suck so much, get some help. People wanna help you, they want you to be good, they want you to have each other's back every single day that you're out there on the force and on shift. Now, watch what happens with our bad guy here. You can see him actually bend over at this point to pick up his gun. So this is another instance of an officer shooting somebody in the back in a 100% justifiable manner. The dude dropped his gun and, and now he is reaching down to pick that gun up again. Why did the officer shoot him while he was running away? Because he's picking up a gun to shoot at the officer again. And, and I know we're sitting here with you know hours to look and all those things and all the time in the world and he only had a split second. But in that split second, because he's highly trained, he made the right decision. There's a few clear bright lines in law enforcement training and just to have the things to have in your head. Here is thing number one. This person is turned, he's fired at the police, therefore he's, not, he's willing to do almost anything to get away. He's now fleeing again. He dropped that gun. Let's say the officer saw him drop that gun, whether he dropped it intentionally or not, but he continues to flee. Then what do we do? We shoot him because we don't know what else he has. He showed a propensity for violence and he's attempting to flee, which means you don't know where he's gonna end up. We can't let him go. Uh, I think the officer handled it perfectly. And now we see the guy that falls down and you can see the gun right here. So you can mm -hmm. see the fact that he has dropped the gun. He's away from the gun. Now he's on the ground. The officer's gonna tell him, hey, get on the ground at this point. So he gives him another shot at this point. And probably my guess would be, now again, we don't know because it ends up not happening. The guy's gonna tumble around a little bit, get up for a step or two, fall over, and then you know briefly regret his life choices. Uh, but this might have been a good choice after that if he had decided to keep moving to use the fur missile, to use the canine to drag that guy down or something like that. I think the officer did an excellent job of shooting when he had to. So this was a must situation. This guy's shooting at me, I must shoot him. And then when he was done, when the guy's uh, not an immediate deadly threat, the officer didn't shoot at him. And I think that shows pretty good discernment. Right now he's probably unarmed and he has stopped fleeing. Therefore it's time to stop shooting. And he did a great job of that. So I think this shows a high level of skill. I think this shows a very high level of professionalism, which I think we tend to see out of canine officers because of course canine is not your first assignment. You gotta have a little bit of experience. You gotta really kind of be a pretty good player in order to get into the canine world. And I think he did an excellent job of that. Let's make sure that we recognize, man, I think as you're coming to the scene and waiting for that guy to bail out of the car, take that moment to really take some deep breaths and to remind yourself of your fundamentals if you're gonna need them. Number two, man, do everything you can to make that first shot count because it gets harder from there every time. Number three, keep thinking. This officer definitely did. And he covered his ass.